Uh, Kelly, what are some of the other things uh, uh, that are part of uh, what you hope to achieve uh, if elected? Well, obviously, I'm a big uh, proponent of public safety, um, not just our police department, but we have, uh, you know, code enforcement also is, is part of our public safety uh, efforts. And there are kind of so two things that I want to make sure happen with, with those departments, and that is that they need adequate funding and they need adequate staffing to take care of the issues that we're having. Um, the police department has put together a, a a, a five-year strategic plan that has several goals in that uh, in terms of enhancing technological advances and f to fight crime and so forth and and obviously enhancing the police facilities is a big goal I in the form of a, of a police headquarters and I really want to see that happen um, I know new police headquarters has been discussed for at least 10 years maybe at, more at least yeah um, because it, I mean we went through the whole uh, discussion of uh, then it was characterized as the law mall Right. Um, and then uh, that was actually doing an election cycle. So uh, um, what, where, do you have a, a vision uh, of where you would – are you a person for centralized, decentralized, substations? Um, well, do, do you have a philosophy on that? Uh, my philosophy is, is very much aligned with, I guess, what, what the chief's philosophy is, and I would defer to him on the, on the details of it. But – we definitely have need to have a presence downtown in in the downtown because we are a city police department and that's where you know our our, uh, our courthouse is our county seat is and so forth um, in terms of substations I, I think folks uh, sort of misunderstand what, the, what their real usefulness is and they, they think a police presence will occur if you have a substation the, the problem with a substation is that you create a structure that then needs to be manned uh, for it to be effective, which effectively then takes officers off of the street and, you know, adds the need to have civilian staff and so forth. So, And, and that would be the big question. Is there a place in the city that needs a 24-hour operation uh, open for people to know where it is to be able to, to come to for any and all their problems? Because otherwise you are talking about having a facility that may be used for just an interview filling out paperwork versus a manned uh, area. Well, when it comes right down to it, you, you do have a 24-7 facility. It, well, it's, it's a virtual facility because you have access to the phone um, and to a, a computer and to email. And so if, if you need police services, most people don't go to a building to ask for police services. They call. So that's not going to change. Um, a lot of the technical stuff, that the report writing and so forth that goes on with the police is now being done in the cars. There are computers in the cars. There's all sorts of Internet access and, and database access. So in terms of having that structure there for, for the officers to go in, sit down at a typewriter like we're used to and, and bang out a report, th those days are gone. So wherever you are, it's almost a virtual presence uh, in the community. But there is a need to have a, a headquarters where the the infrastructure of the police department, for lack of a better uh, word, goes on. You know, we have a lot of different divisions. There's planning, there's community services, there's training and education, there's uh, patrol division, drugs, and, and all of those need to have adequate facilities to work out of. And right now we're cut up into so many pieces and spread around. Um, it, we're losing effectiveness that way. Now, crime is obviously... Uh a hot topic for those living on the West End. Um, do you have any uh, uh, creative uh, techniques that may help, uh, you know, make the neighbors feel more safe or secure? Well, again, this, I guess, coming from a law enforcement background, the, this is not done alone. And the police department does employ a lot of really innovative things now and are working on more tech technological advances. As a matter of fact, well, we're doing the Segway patrols, bicycle patrols, foot patrols, you know, trying to get more presence out. Part of the NAC, uh, the beauty of the NACs is that, you know, there's always a police presence there and an opportunity to voice what your concerns are and have some some face-to-face -face interaction. Um, CrimeReports.com just came online, it's being paid for by a grant from Crime uh, Crime Prevention, Maryland Governor's Office of Crime Prevention and Crime Control, that allows you to actually go online and see the calls for service that are being handled in your neighborhood throughout the city. You can separate out the proactive uh, things the police are doing. So if you uncheck all of the crimes and just look at what they're doing when they're not answering calls, there's a lot of proactive stuff going on. Um, do you think we'll ever get to the point like where we had certain areas where they may need surveillance cameras in these areas? Uh, 
Well, speaking of cameras, uh, speed cameras are going to be coming, hopefully. Uh, the city is working on legislation now to put speed cameras into effect. And I know that's a controversial topic, but uh, it is intended to have to make a behavioral change so that people are, are you know, worried about coming through a speed camera. It's like when you see the lights on top of a, a police car, your foot comes off the accelerator. I don't care who you are. I do it, too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly those kinds of things can be looked at. There's grant money out there for things like that. Um, I think that's one of the functions of our planning yeah. department, the department, is to look at those kinds of innovative well, things. I just remember that one time at John Hanson Sagners, they mm -hmm. had, had surveillance cameras. Right. Now, well, that was public housing, and so yeah. that, that would kind of made it different than just having cameras okay. on the street. That was public housing property. Um, well, we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, where can people go to find out uh, more information? I have a website. Uh, it's www.votekellyrussell.com. Um, I'm also out uh, banging on doors and meeting people, and maybe you've seen my uh, eye-catching, as George Wenshaw said, uh, white and blue signs, big blue polka dot on a white background. Um, but uh, I would love it if you'd visit my website. You can also reach me at kelly at votekellyrussell.com. That's my email address. And uh, I'm listed in the phone book, really. <laughs> and what are some of the other issues that uh, you're passionate about? Uh, I really want to see some revitalization of areas that are depressed in the city. The Fredericktown Mall prime example, you know, and, and, and this is a current theme I'm hearing with all of the mayoral and, and aldermen candidates. I think we all see the same concerns. The West End's finally definitely getting some attention, at least in this election cycle. Well, you know, it's it, 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 it's not that it hasn't gotten attention. Yeah. I, I think there were some plans that uh, didn't pan out with, with the mall redevelopment. So, you know, hopefully that's something that's been... Uh, being woken up, and then you know we have a lot of stuff going on with the East uh, East Street Gateway and so forth. So I'd like to see some some life breathed back into those areas. Um, what what um, what what are some of the uh, other um, kind of ideas you may have for job creation? That's a hot topic. Well, it is a hot Especially topic right now with unemployment um, rising. Right. Um, I think our economic development is is key, and you know the city's Department of Economic Development is out there and trying to court these you know office businesses and and different uh, industries to come to Frederick, and and that's something that I think really needs to be um, supported by the incoming mayor and board of aldermen, and and those kinds of efforts to bring jobs to Frederick. Uh, are very very important, and we also need to start thinking about things like uh, you know telecommuting. I attended a, a lecture last night, um, and I apologize because I've forgotten the gentleman's name. Alan Feinberg brought him here, but he talked about what he called virtual adjacency, which is uh, essentially uh, you know we have with with fiber technology being able to bring uh, big screens and telecommuting uh, and and having workplaces brought to the people instead of people having to drive to their workplaces. So. Out, out of the box kinds of things, and I can't wait till somebody comes up with an out of the box phrase for out of the box because it's so <laughs> in the box now. Uh, you guys' uh, schedules full, filling up pretty uh, pretty hefty with uh, requests from uh, from every organization that is absolutely imaginally known and made up as it goes. <laughs> absolutely, and it's, uh, I have to say I'm having a great time uh, enjoying talking to people, meeting people, and hearing what it is that they're concerned about. All right, what's that website? One more time. www.votekellyrussell.com All right, Kelly, I want to thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to be, uh, as I said...